Orlando fan with Liverpool start? Um, I started watching them right after the 2006 World Cup. Okay. Okay. So I followed. I, I, I basically picked the player, Steven Gerrard. Okay. okay. During the 2006 World Cup, he was like idolized him. Then when he went to club level, so I started noticing that he played for the team Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, back in my, I would say my childhood days, I only know two teams. It's either Manchester United or Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's, so it's, 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 it's Gerrard's the reason why he sport Liverpool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Basically. It's, it's interesting because when, when I was, obviously I'm a bit older than Steven, at Liverpool he was my boot boy, so he cleaned my boots wow. as, as a young player, um, which was quite surreal. Yeah. Steven, but he was, um, he was always the best player yeah. and he could do everything. I understand why people, like there's not many pe players who can, like the people you choose clubs don't they? Yeah. But he made that much of an impact on people. You can choose a player. Yeah. He must have had an impact on you. You, on you. Could, you could see the character that is instilled in himself. Yeah. The minute he... When you see someone like that, in, in, close up, that focus yeah. to be the best, and I'm not talking about on a Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking every day. Yeah. He, in training, if Steven had a bad day in training, yeah. he won't be happy. Yeah. He would not be happy about it. He wanted to be the best player every day. Yeah. And that's what he did, and that's how he got to the top, because it's about being the best. In whatever, whichever game he's playing in, whether it's a training game, a friendly, would be the best player, and yeah. if he wasn't, he won't be happy. Yeah. And that's what's driven him to be the one of the greats of Liverpool. How do you think he's feel now looking at Liverpool? Obviously, he'd be happy to see him going so well, but he, would he be itching to be on that park? Well, he played at the weekend and yeah. scored in the foundation yeah. game, so yeah. I mean, um, that'd be nice to go. But listen, he'd have loved to be that first Liverpool captain for a long time to yeah. lift the lift the Premier League trophy. Yeah. But, um, but I, I think it wouldn't be that much of an impact because watching him the other day against uh, that friendly match against Liverpool as yeah. well. So it, it, he still has it in himself. Like it, it's in his DNA to come yeah. up in the last yeah. minute and score the yeah. we know. He cut him the open. Please Liverpool. Yeah. yeah. That's what they say about Steven Gerrard. Yeah. Same with people like Carragher. He cut them open. It's Liverpool. There's nothing else inside them. Yeah. I mean, he probably could have left, couldn't he? If you think about Gerrard, he probably could have went to AC Milan, Barcelona, yeah. definitely Chelsea, you know, the list of teams. Yeah. But he stayed in the end. He would have walked into any team. He walked into any team. Yeah. And you know why? Because he can play in any position. Yeah. That's why I think he's one of the all-time greats. Yeah. You know, you know, when you see a footballer who can play centre forward, that's it. Yeah. I've seen Steven Gerrard play when he was 18 years old, right back. I think he was against Sheffield Wednesday at home. Best player on the pitch by a mile, at right back. Yeah. He plays in midfield, best player. Yeah. He's just, he just had that ability. And not many can do that. As a manager? He's doing good. Yeah. He's doing very good, isn't he? He's very early, early days into his managerial career. But I think when you're Gerrard, you had such a football career. He's not had a break, has he? So he goes straight into being a coach at Liverpool at the youth team, yeah. under 18, did a good job there. Then Rangers come knocking. He couldn't turn it down. Yeah. Because know why? He's ambitious. Mm. He wants to be, he wants to he wants to start moving that way in winning stuff as a manager. Because yeah. he's won it as a player. So where, where I mean for both of you, where do you see his managerial career going? Obviously everyone is yeah. thinking one day Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool. <laughs> but in between there, that could be another five years down the track. Can you see him going to the championship or another What's Premier League something? side? Uh, I'll just give him some time because he's basically just started off. Yeah, he started the youth coaching in Liverpool. Yeah. He went on to Rangers. Uh, but right now, Klopp is doing a really good job at Liverpool. Yeah. So I wouldn't want to see that disruption there. Yeah. So maybe when Klopp steps down, I would like he would be the ideal person to take over there. I mean, I think it's a, it's a, it's a while away for Jurgen Klopp stepping down because yeah. I think he'll be there for a foreseeable future. He's signed a long-term yeah. contract but and you can see the long-term plan that he's envisioned for the club as well. I'm sure Liverpool, somewhere in the thinking of somebody, the tog, the yeah. they'll, be, they'll be turning, won't they? Especially yeah. the fans, you know, yeah. they, they'll, they'll see him. But I think Stephen will know himself, he's got a long way to go before he goes to that. That's what I say, is there another step before... I, I think he's not going to be at Rangers for five years, surely. Yeah. Now, what's your thoughts on, on Klopp this season um, or going I, forward? Basically, I think they're overachieving at the moment. Right, okay. Wow. To really overachieving. To oh, okay. this all okay. yeah. Let's yeah. let's let's see what Manchester City achieved last season. Yeah. To go toe to toe with them. I agree. I agree. I never expect them to be like maybe two points clear of them with one game ahead of them. But seriously, Manchester City last season was like a monster. Yeah. They were trampling everything in their side. Liverpool, okay, maybe they got to the Champions League final, but they were nowhere close in terms of the league to really compete with Manchester City. Van Dijk came in, they got a new goalkeeper, our right backs are solid. Uh, midfield a bit questionable, but you can see the improvement. The strike force is there, but they haven't just clicked this season yet. So it's what he does with the 11 players that they have week in, week out. He managed to close that gap with 
uh, City. Mm. Now they are leading by two points. Yeah. And it's absolutely spot. Yeah. Spot on. To be fair, when I started this season, I thought like, okay, top four would be good. But to see them going toe to toe with Manchester City with what eight, eight or seven games left, yeah, uh, yeah that is. Well, you think about the, the difference that maybe the goalkeeper, as you mentioned, yeah. Van Dijk can make to the team. I mean, how many points did we finish behind City last year? I think it was 20 something. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, and when they signed Van Dijk for 70 million, yeah. I tell you what, a lot of people were like, "That's a lot of money." Yeah. I tell you what, now <laughs> he's probably worth double that yeah. or treble that. Yeah. That that was a striker's oh. striker's pain. That was, I mean, that was a masterstroke. Yeah. Because the best defender in the world for me, yeah. the best. I've said to you before, and I've said to other people, he has got everything. And by the way. He only looks like he's in second gear. Yep. You know, he can go through the gears. He, he, he's that good. If, if uh, City do win the championship, Liverpool win every game, City win every game. They lose by one or two points, whatever it is now. I think it's one, is it? Yeah, one. Where does the improvement come for Liverpool? Is it purely goals. signings? I think goals, goals. from midfield, midfield yeah. area. I mean, I don't know if you agree. Yeah. I just think the front three. Striker for you? Yeah. Last season, they were going all out to attack, but this season, they strengthened the back. Yep. They were more disciplined in their approach. They're not just going gung ho, everyone forward, and then then, and then keep the the centre back at the back. So they have the serious, they have the thought to always defend first, then attack. Mm. The midfield, okay, that's where the difference is. If you have a good midfield, uh, that will be the difference between front and back. They can transition very well. So so they need that. I I don't know. I expected Keita to do more this season Mm. to fill in that gap to get the ball across. Is he a disappointment so far for you? I wouldn't say a disappointment because I haven't seen much of him yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A disappointment would be to see him week in, week out and disappoint, but I think he's played what? Do you think he'll get better? I haven't seen anyone perform bad on the clock. Uh, I think Liverpool fans thought he might be a bit of a missing link, yeah. Keita, because they've seen glimpses of him in the Bundesliga. Yeah. He's getting forward and scoring. Scoring great goals, mm. but it's a different league, isn't it? Yeah. We've seen that. Liverpool demolished the by Munich. Or yeah. Yeah. It, it, a dip. it might take him a year to settle. He's got ability. I mean, I watched him pre-season this year, covering the Liverpool game, and I went, whoa, this guy could he could absolutely run the show. He could be the best player in the Premier League. Yeah. But I'm thinking, it's pre-season, don't get carried away. And maybe he struggled at the physicality of the Premier League this year. You know, that, that physical side of the game, he's got to bring that. Is there a midfielder in mind? Is there one that's talked about or linked with the club? I'm sure there's a number of players linked, but is there one that you think, if we got him... I, th- I think... I think there's plenty of players that would like to have, isn't there? Yeah. Are all around the world. But yeah. I, I think for, for me, the, the missing link, I, I don't personally think, will be an out and out attacking midfield. I think we've got plenty of them. Yeah. Um, I think Someone on the left? I, I, know, I, th- I think that the manager possibly doesn't know what his best three in midfield are. They're all very similar. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that's the only place that's changed. When, when everyone's fit, yeah. the only place that the manager changes is the middle three in midfield. You look at the rest of the team, if Gomez is fit, so it's Robertson, Van Dijk, Gomez, Trent Alexander Arnold, and then you've got the three up front, Mo Salah, you've got Mane, and you've got Firmino. Them three in midfield are bit, the only three that have been rotated the whole season. Yeah. That's the problem. Not, when I say it's a problem, I'm not sure what the best three are. Yeah. On the big games, he's always went Henderson, Milner, and Alden. Yeah. But then maybe are people working that out. Yeah. So he probably needs another option. In the, so I think maybe a, a midfielder who can do a bit of both. Yeah. This might be a massive shout and I don't think it'll happen because I don't consider him as a club player, but would a Garrett Bale suit Liverpool? If they would certainly wouldn't say no. <laughs> um, yeah, possibly, it's whether, whether the financials can be done and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. It'd, it'd, be, it'd be a big signing. Um, listen, if he's going to come back to, the, to England, I'm sure that everyone would take him. Yeah. Is the, I think as well with Bale, when I talked about when, when uh, Madrid beat Liverpool in, yeah. the, in the final, they had that little bit of the X factor, didn't they, with yeah. Ronaldo and Bale. Yeah. Could Liverpool maybe just do with one more that kind of yeah. X factor player who can win a final yeah. and score the goals that he did? Maybe. But I think in the finals, that's what, that's what we've lacked, yeah. is that maybe that little bit of an X factor to get us over the line. Yeah. So possible, yeah, it could be a good shout. Yeah? Yeah. I'm saying we need a big name in the team. Like Van Dijk now is already the defensive general. There. Would you see him as the next captain? Here's the thing with Van Dijk, when I, when I watch him, I notice that he's only commanding the back line and the midfield. But if you look at Steven Gerrard, when he was captain there, he would scream at the attackers for not going forward. Yeah. He would scream at the goalkeeper. <laughs> he would scream at the left wing, his right if, wing. Well, if Jamie Carragher would let <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you, th- you think you need a captain who's in the middle? I would prefer a captain in the middle because... What, a central midfield? Yeah, a central midfield. Really? 
we have a captain in Henderson, but I'm not saying he's bad, but uh, he doesn't have. I can only see. I can only see one thing: if he stays at Liverpool, is him being the next the captain. And that's no disrespect yeah. to to Milner, who's vice captain at Henderson, but I just I just feel the guy uses class, and I think people respond to to, the, to his presence about him. I think he's got he's a presence. Got the respect yeah. of everyone. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'm not saying the other guys haven't got a presence. No, of course, of but course. He is a Rolls Royce of a yeah. footballer. Now, at the end of the season, he said eight games away. If Liverpool do win it, fantastic. If they go on to the Champions League, the FA Cup, but just see, just see, nothing pans out. Nothing works out. Uh, it'll be a bit hard to take, seeing that you were like seven and nearly ten points at one point yeah. of time ahead of City, right? It, it would be hard to take, but listen, uh, we were seven points ahead of City, but we never expected to be seven points ahead of City in the first place. But you were there. We were there, of course, and we always knew we were going to drop points. We were too good at that moment to know that we won't be dropping points. We only lost one game. We only lost one, one game, game to City. Yeah. So if it works out, it works out. I know that it, the team is definitely giving their best this season. You can see they're going all out. You can see the, that their fatigue are dropping to this point because they're playing with the same 11 every single week in, week out. Mm -hmm. And City, maybe they have the chance do, to rotate their players and stuff like that. Do you think, and just bit devil advocate, are we a bit nervous at the moment, Liverpool? Yes, definitely. You could see the way they approach games. Are you guys as fans, are you yeah. are you bringing that on a little bit inside the stadium? Yes, just, a little yes, bit? Yes, definitely. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. Is it... People say, I mean, I personally. Can you blame them? You know, when I hear the players interviewed or I hear them interviewed, I don't. I'm not sure if they are that nervous. Yeah. I think they're just playing their game and playing. Their, but then when you, it comes to the games, you go, oh, well, we haven't won four or five nil this week, yeah. so they must be nervous. Yeah. But when you hear Andy Robinson interviewed or Milner or people yeah. like this, they seem pretty confident and pretty yeah. relaxed. So I think maybe the fans have to take a little bit of a step back and let the boys go my, and express themselves. My big thing was, and we I spoke about it when Robert Ruth was here how to go and win a title when you haven't got a team that has done it before. So City, they've yeah, all heard, won. I heard what he said. And he, he said he loved it when he was... Yeah, but, uh, he, he, but he didn't think Liverpool would win it, did he? No, he didn't. But he was saying when he was at Leicester, he just embraced it and just relished it. Yeah. But he could see a few in the dressing room that were maybe getting a little bit nervous. Yeah. I think it was a different league that year, wasn't it? Yeah, a Freak league, no disrespect. <laughs> Spurs should have won it. Yeah, but, well, anyone could have won yeah. it, but obviously all credit to Leicester for doing that. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's easy to say that yeah. when, when, you, when, when you've done it. Yeah. You know, when, you, when you're watching it from the outside and as a player, it's a lot more difficult, isn't the, it? The, the beauty is, and, another, and none of by us... the way, no disrespect, that's Leicester. Yeah. This is Liverpool. Yeah. There's a different pressure. I mean, I always see players talk about yeah. playing for football clubs. There's a different pressure when yeah. you play for Liverpool or you play for one of the big teams. Yeah. It's totally different. If, and if, I don't if care Leicester what threw says, it away, everyone would have said, gee, they've done well. If Liverpool right. throw it away, they say you issue, blew it. You're going to get criticised. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's the difference between the two clubs. Yeah. Liverpool are a, a different dimension to yeah. them. I think the beauty is we've got no idea what's going to happen. Liverpool could lose the league by six points. They could win it by three, four. Who knows? I mean, I, I just think the Liverpool fans need to relax a little bit. Yeah. We're still in the Champions League. Yeah. We've got a great chance it. of beating Porto, getting to the semi-final. And we can win the Premier League. Yeah. If I was a football fan, I wouldn't be nervous. I'd yeah. be excited, yeah. looking forward. Always look on the bright side of life. Correct. Yeah. Love that song. Love this shirt. It's for you. There you go, my I'm friend. I'm going to do the honours. There you go. Okay. Can you afford anything? We can just uh, grab a picture for you.